Hi everybody, I'm Steve Fells at agencylogic.com. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to this, uh, my first video blog. I'm not sure whether I should call it a vlog or a blogio, uh, but I want to get one thing out of the way right from the get-go, and that is that when most people hear me speak for the first time, they normally listen to how I'm saying something rather than what I'm actually saying. 90% um, of the time they guess incorrectly. Uh, they will guess that I'm from either Australia or I'm from England. And so it's Mick Dundee versus the Geico Gecko. I promise you that by the end of this short video I'll give you the answer. So let's talk about Facebook. One of the questions I get asked on a regular basis is why is Facebook important? The, the reason I think that I can bring some value to the table is that for those of you that have known me for a while, you know that in addition to the agencyology.com single property websites, we also have a separate company called Social Gears. Um, it's been around for the best part of two years and we've been developing Facebook applications for a, a number of very well-known brands. Um, not in the real estate market, um, but there's a, there's a common a commonality with regards to the question about Facebook. Uh, whether you are a realtor, whether you're a real estate franchise, um, or whether you're a very well-known brand outside of the real estate world, people are confused about what Facebook represents essentially how they can leverage Facebook and why it's important. Um, ultimately, the market has changed and marketing hasn't. And we're in a process now of, of seeing that change, but we're very much at the beginning of what Facebook represents. Now, there are a number of other social tools uh, Twitter obviously is uh, one that's getting a lot of media attention. There's also LinkedIn, there's also MySpace. Uh, I think MySpace will go away over a period of time making Facebook the dominant social network. But to, to really fully understand what Facebook represents, the first thing that people need to overcome is a mental hurdle that it's not a website. Um, it may seem like a strange thing, but I view Facebook as a whole new way of communicating. It's not a traditional website as we've seen for the last 10 or 15 years. By traditional, I mean somewhere like CNN.com. You can go there and get your news. If you go to ESPN.com, you get to see the Yankee score, and if you want to buy somebody else's junk, then you go to eBay.com. But the reality is when you go to those websites, you do so in isolation. You are not really experiencing anything other than the transaction or the interaction to get information. And where that differs to the lifestyle that Facebook represents is that you and the company that own that website are the only people that know about it. Now, there are social websites out there within real estate. Uh, Truly Your Voices comes to mind, Active Rain comes to mind, and they're both phenomenal websites. But they are, again, outside of the social network. If you look at the size collectively of all of the real estate social networks, Facebook will grow by more than that number in the next 24 hours. And so the eyes have moved and anything really that's outside of Facebook, in my mind, is a tailgate party outside the Super Bowl. Uh, everybody wants a ticket to the big game. And as good as those tailgate parties are, um, you really need to get into where the bulk of the audience um, are. And at the moment, that's Facebook. So. Hurdle number one to overcome is that Facebook is not a website in the traditional sense. You need to understand that there are traditional websites, then there are social websites, and Facebook is the dominant player in, in that market. We also have to look at virality, uh, and this is a, a massive uh, value that, that Facebook presents to marketers, whether you are marketing a listing or whether you are marketing a, a brandable product. Um, if you look at how you interact, again, as I mentioned, on a traditional website it's an isolated thing. In Facebook it's not. If you update your status, you comment on somebody else's status, you upload your own photographs, you play with an application, then everybody within your sphere of influence, all of your friends, and we can have a separate conversation about what a friend represents, um, but everyone gets to know about it. And that one thing is also huge when it comes to the value proposition that Facebook represents. Um, if you are in marketing and you're looking to leverage this new medium, you're not just marketing to one person, you're marketing to multiple people. And you then get these people marketing for you. So we have, um, first of all, the difference that Facebook um, represents versus traditional websites. Then you have the virality of it in that any interactivity that, that takes place by an individual on Facebook is communicated to everybody within their sphere of influence. Um, then you have the stickiness side of things. If you look at the most successful traditional websites, uh, user engagement is recorded in minutes. If somebody, if the average time is uh, several 
minutes, then that website's very successful. Facebook is registered or recorded by hours. People are spending hours on this website. And again, it's a huge difference. It's a trusted environment. People are going to get recommendations. They're going to interact. They're going to see, rec uh, they're going to see the activities of people that they trust, their friends. Um, and again, this is a very different environment. So um, what, what we have here is a very uh, traditional website versus Facebook is difference number one. Um, you have an isolated uh, action versus um, a viral action, which is thing number two. Um, number three is you have the trusted environment, unlike Amazon.com book recommendations that come from strangers, you have recommendations from people that you know. Um, and the fourth thing is it's free. Not a very strong point, the fourth thing, because social media, if you create it, isn't free. Any time you spend on social media isn't free. Um, but from the user's perspective, it's it, the, the world that we've come to, to live in, certainly online, involves lots of freemium type um, products um, and Facebook is currently free. So again, it's a huge benefit there. So I hope that my explanation, albeit brief, um, has helped clarify um, why I think Facebook is important, um, why marketing needs to change to um, adopt this new method, this new channel of reaching um, a far larger number of people. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. If there's ways in which you're using primarily Facebook to, to the benefit of your business, then you know, tell me. Um, if you're still a naysayer, then tell me what's wrong. Tell me why Facebook isn't you know, the, the new wave of the future. Um, I know that people say it's a fad, but then all technology is a fad. Lotus 1, 2, 3 was a fad. Um, it's just the length of the fad that changes um, and whether an individual or a company can leverage that period of time to their benefit, either financially or in some other business way. So give me your feedback. Um, and again, remember that 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on your car insurance.